Hey guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, we are going to check out the Foxwell MT301 OBD2 code reader. And if your check engine light is on in your vehicle, this may be the tool for you. I bought this off Amazon. It was really reasonably priced and I just wanted to test it out and see how well it works. So OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics and all cars and light trucks model year 1996 and newer that were sold in the US were required to have this port in the vehicle. So any vehicles that are 1996 or newer, you will most likely have the port on the driver's side underneath the dash. If your car or light truck was sold outside of the US, it's still possible that you have this in your vehicle. Just take a look around to confirm for sure. Let's take a look at the back of the packaging here and it just lists a bunch of features and benefits and it has a USB cable here. We'll check out what that's for. All right, guys, so here's everything that was inside the package. We got the OBD2 code reader here. We got the USB cable that you can use to update the OBD2 code reader and to print data from the OBD2 code reader. Uh, we also have the user's guide and all the paperwork here. And make sure to read through all of this paperwork and understand it completely before you do use the OBD2 code reader. Uh, they will tell you everything you need to know on how to use the OBD2 code reader both safely and properly. So let me read through the user's guide and the other paperwork and I'll be back and then we'll test out the Foxwell NT301 OBD2 code reader. All right, guys, here is my car and the OBD2 port is right down here. And you can see that on the top, it's longer than on the bottom and the sides are angled. So make sure that you install the OBD2 code reader the correct way. And you can see the same thing on the OBD2 code reader here on the connection. Uh, the top is longer than the bottom and the sides are angled. So let me go ahead and uh, plug in the OBD2 code reader and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I have the OBD2 code reader plugged in, and after you plug it in, you just need to turn your vehicle to the on position, and um, you don't have to start up your vehicle, but you do need it to the on position so your vehicle can communicate with the OBD2 reader. And we're just going to go through each of these options here and talk about what they are and what they're for, and we'll go into the OBD2 option last. Uh, that's where we read codes and look at all of the different uh, options within the OBD2 menu. First, let's look at the DTC lookup, uh, which stands for Diagnostic Trouble Code Lookup. And if we go in here, this is where you can, you know, put in a code. So like, for instance, uh, P0100. And then you can hit enter and it'll tell you what that code is. Uh, mass or volume airflow A circuit. And, um, you know, unless you're a mechanic and do this for a living, we're not going to know what that is. But this is where you would go to the Internet and you would do the research uh, to figure out what that code means and, um, you know, what it might mean for your vehicle. And if, you know, uh, potential problems that could be giving that trouble code. All right, the next option here is review, and the user's guide says the playback option leads to screens uh, for review of recorded test results. So like after we've gone into the OBD2 menu, um, you can look up past results in the review option there. Um, the print data option is where you can print test results uh, by using that USB cable that's included and hooking it up to your computer. Um, about here will tell you, you know, the information of the OBD2 code reader, um, you know, and let you know if your, your software is up to date. Let's back out here. All right, and here is the setup menu, and in here we have uh, language. So here are the different languages that the OBD2 code reader can do. And you can configure monitors, you can uh, change the unit of measure, uh, key beep set. So like if you don't like this beep that we're hearing, um, you can turn that off. Diagnostic beep set and tool self-test. Let's back out of here. So now we're going to go into the OBD2 uh, EOBD menu. So let's go ahead and go in here. And this is where it's going to communicate with the onboard computer. And it's doing its thing right now.
Okay, so here it tells us the system status. It lets us know some information. Um, and then it goes into this, erase previously stored data to save data from this test. So if we hit yes, this will save this data into that review option. So we're going to hit enter here. All right, guys, so you can see there are three different lights here. Um, once we get into the diagnostic menu, a green, a yellow, and a red. Uh, the green LED display, uh, the user's guide says it indicates the in engine system is working normally. All monitors on the vehicles are active and performing their diagnostic testing, and no diagnostic trouble codes are found. The yellow LED display shows the tool finds a possible problem. Pending diagnostic trouble codes exist. Uh, or and some of the vehicle's emissions monitors have not run their diagnostic testing. The red LED display indicates there are some problems in one or more of your vehicle's system. Okay, so we're just going to go through each of these uh, options here in the diagnostic menu, and we'll start with read codes. So um, in here we have two different options, stored codes and pending codes. Uh, pending codes are just codes that haven't fully registered in your onboard computer yet, uh, but they may eventually. So uh, we're going to go into stored codes. And uh, we see that I have a code P0420, and it's one of one. So if I had multiple codes, this is where you'd scroll through and, and see all the different codes that you might have. Um, catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one. And unless you're a mechanic and do this for a living, we're not going to know what that means. And this is where you'd go to the internet and you do the research, uh, you know, with the code that you have and, um, you know, what's going on with your car and see if you can try to figure out, uh, you know, what this code might mean for your car. Uh, for my car, my 2006 Toyota Corolla, I think this has to do with one of the O2 sensors um, that I need to replace. And, you know, even if you decided not to replace uh, whatever the problem is yourself or try to fix it yourself, at least you would know the code um, you know, that you're getting from your onboard computer. So when you do talk to a mechanic, um, you know, you could talk about the possible things that may be going on with your vehicle, um, you know, and what the cost of those types of repairs are. So um, let's back out here. Um, the next one is erase codes. And we're not going to erase the codes in my car because I don't want to do that until I fix the uh, the problem. So I'm going to hit no, but, um, you know, you can get in here and erase the codes after you make the repair. Okay, so the next option is live data. And uh, it says in the user's manual that live data menu lets you view, record, and playback real-time PID data. Uh, from the electronic control module and we're not going to do that today but if you're you know having a specific issue um, you know you can look at real-time results and I think we got to go back because it keeps beeping and I do want to turn off that beep so let's go into setup here and let's go into diagnostic beep set and let's just turn the beep off and I think it's going to stop beeping now uh, while we continue on with the review. All right, guys. So the next option is view freeze frame here. And this is a nice option because this will tell you a bunch of different information that was stored when the diagnostic trouble code uh, was triggered and stored. So you can use this information, all these values here to help you track down uh, what might be going on with your vehicle. And um, yeah, this is really useful information. You can just, you know, go to the Internet and look up the different thresholds for your vehicle. Um, and see if any of this information helps you identify why, uh, you know, you're getting your specific trouble code. Okay, the next one is I am readiness. And there's also a button here uh, that you can access it from the main menu. And the user's guide says I am readiness is a useful function used to check if all monitors are okay or uh, not available. So let's hit this and check out the monitors on my 2006 Corolla. 
And you can see on top there, MIL uh, stands for Malfunction Indicator Lamp. Um, same thing as Check Engine Light. And you can see that it's off. So I have a code, but the Check Engine Light is off. And uh, that's one thing I've noticed with this code is the Check Engine Light does come on and off. And currently it's off. Um, and then you have all your different monitors here. And it tells you if they're okay, um, you know, if they're not available. And it looks like on mine, you know, everything's okay or not available. So there is another option too, which is called INC, which stands for incomplete. And it means vehicle was not driven enough to complete the monitor. So like if you erase the codes in your onboard computer um, and then you were to test this, you may get some incompletes. Um, let's back out here. Okay, so the next one is the O2 monitor test, and the user's guide says that OBD2 regulations require certain vehicles uh, monitor and test oxygen O2 sensors to isolate fuel and emissions-related faults. The O2 monitor test function is used to retrieve completed O2 sensors monitor test results. All right, so the next option here is the onboard monitor test. And um, in the user's guide, it says that the onboard monitor test function is useful after servicing or after clearing a vehicle's ECU's memory. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, we have component test. And in the user's guide, the component test, uh, it says that the component test allows the code reader to control operation of vehicle's components tests or systems. Uh, we're not going to use that today. Vehicle information, uh, this where once you do this, it will like come back with the VIN number, um, you know, show your vehicle's VIN number. Okay, so the next one is modules present and um, the user's guide says that the code reader identifies module IDs and communication protocols for OBD2 modules in the vehicle. And then uh, the last option we got here is unit of measure where you can change between English and metric. So, um, all right, guys, this is a nice code reader and it has a lot of advanced functions that you may or may not use, but they're there if you need them in the future or want to use them in the future. And, you know, the, the main things with a code reader is just that it reads codes and lets you know the, uh, the code of why your check engine light is on or codes. And then from here, it's, you know, going to the internet and doing the research on what your particular codes mean and what else might be going on with your vehicle to try to help you track down uh, why your check engine light is on. And, you know, from there, you have to decide whether you want to, uh, you know, try to repair the vehicle yourself or go to a mechanic. But, you know, even if you don't repair the vehicle yourself and you do go to the mechanic, you have this information handy. So, you know, you can let the mechanic know ahead of time what code you're getting and talk about possible problems and the costs of those types of repairs. So, um, you know, the other thing, too, is the view freeze frame, being able to get all this uh, information about what's going on with your vehicle when the uh, diagnostic trouble code was stored. This is really helpful too if you go to the internet and you can look with you know all of the all of these different things you know what the threshold for your vehicle is and see if this helps you identify um, you know what may be going on with your vehicle and the I am readiness feature is a nice feature too to be able to test your monitors and your vehicles uh, before you go get them emissions tested so you know all of these features make this a nice OBD2 code reader so I hope you guys have liked this video and thank you so much for watching please like subscribe and comment and I hope to see you guys in the next video have a good one Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And if you have the time, check out these other great videos.